High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my brother, my actual real young brother. Introduce yourself, please. Hello, my name is Balatron. All right. This is our review of Power Rangers, the 2017 live action film. I give the movie a B minus. Balatron, what do you give the movie? I give the movie a C plus. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Power Ranger brand, Power Rangers originated in Japan and then a uh, company used f action footage from Japan, merged it with some American footage, and it became a worldwide phenomenon in the 90s and on. And even though the brand isn't as popular as it was when it debuted, it's still going on strong. Uh, there have been, uh, I think, 15 or even 20 seasons by now. I haven't seen every episode of the show, but I've seen every season. I've seen episodes from every season of the show. Uh, you've seen Most several of shows, right? I'm stopped after Wild Force. After Wild Force, then my interest in Power Rangers kind of dwindled. So from Power Rangers, my more from Power Rangers up to Power Rangers Wild Force. That's what I was, I was big into it. But after Wild Force, a lot of these reboot movies uh, play on. Uh, items that people enjoy when they were children, usually uh, 12 and under, whereas myself, Power Rangers debuted during my freshman year of college, so I was technically a grown-up, and uh, by the time you were, what, in high I was school? in high school, yes, freshman in high school. Freshman high school. So we grew up with the show, but we were still already uh, beyond the target market, so it gives us the extra special uh, perspective of enjoying the product as it's transitioned over the years into judges this live action film, not only as a movie, but also as fans of Power Rangers. All right, now as longtime Power Ranger fans, we can talk about the brand for hours, and we can definitely talk about this movie on and on and on, but we're going to try to keep things a little tighter. So we're going to mention two things that we didn't like and two things that we did like, uh, except for the first subject because it's something that both he and I greatly dislike. Please, Balatron, tell him the thing that we hated about this movie. Billy was portrayed by a black actor in this movie. At some point in the movie, he got killed. And the problem was that how he got killed was he got hung. And me being a black person with a bad history of our country, United States, about black people getting hung. When I saw that, out of all the power units to get killed in the movie, why does it always have to be the black guy? Story-wise, Billy's the, the nicest. He's the sort of glue that winds up bringing the team together. And often, a death of a character is what brings the team together. That's what they did in the Avengers movie, uh, the death of Agent Coulson, or should I say the death of Agent Coulson <laughs> is what finally gets the Avengers to start uh, being united. So in this movie, uh, a character uh, sacrifices himself or is sacrificed and was being dying. But because they're tied up and he falls into the water, he's right. It is reminiscent of a black person being hung. So not only do you have the black character being killed in a 2017 movie, but he is reminiscent of being hung. And it's even worse because this version of Power Rangers intentionally changes the uh, race of the actors to be slightly different than the colors. Of course, in the original uh, TV show, a black actor played the Black Ranger, an Asian woman played the Yellow Ranger. So in this, they're trying to mix it up by not making the colors of those suits match the race. So on the one hand, they're trying to be uh, you know, racially consciousness. Yet on the other hand, they want to have the black character killed. And yeah, he comes back. We all know he's going to come back. But still, come on. You can't be socially conscious on one area and then fall into that racial thing in another area. Especially during the movie, they had that great joke about how uh, the Asian guy is like, oh, wow, I'm black. And he's like, no, you're not. Yeah, I am. Like, no, you're not. Like, you can't. You can't have it both ways. You can be socially conscious, or you can uh, go back to those old um, 
I mean, if they were going to do this, they might have just stuck with having all the races being the same as for the team. Another thing I didn't like about this movie, after the Rangers discovered the power coins and grabbed the power coins, they all got in the vehicle to head back home. But on their journey back home, they were involved in a very bad car accident. In this car accident, any other normal human being in that vehicle would have been instantly killed. And so from my point of view, when I was watching it, I said, oh no, they got in a very bad car accident. And they all should have, they all should have died. All the power should have died in that car accident. But miraculously, somehow in the next scene, they all pop up in various different locations, and say, like, "All right, what's going on?" So it's like the power coin saved them from that particular car accident. But I would have been much more fine. Like, if I find the guy in the car accident. Some people from town should have came to check it out. It's like, "Oh no, someone got involved in a car accident. Someone, someone rescued these people. Rescue, rescue this." Call their own, call their parents or something. Nope, there was nothing. No mention about there was a very serious car accident and it seemed like no one in town was concerned about that this happened. And like it just happened and just kept on going. Yeah. Now some <laughs> now what some I pointed out in a lot of stories and movies and fantasies, uh, a character will, will get into a mysterious accident and then wakes up in bed or wakes up back home and doesn't remember how they got back, especially if it's they got powers. I mean, they even did something like that in, I think, the Catwoman movie, uh, which is fine. Usually when it's one character, you can sort of believe that maybe they stumbled themselves back home, especially if the character live alone. But we're talking about five teenagers involved in a major accident as they're being chased by authorities, by the way. So you know, those authorities should have, would have eventually found their vehicle Somehow five kids stumbled out of this horrible accident, all stumbled their way back to their homes. And apparently their parents, because unlike in the TV show, this movie actually highlights that these kids have families and parents and things like that. You know, all five of them somehow managed to get back home unnoticed uh, and wake up, you know, with their powers and stuff. That kind of works when you have one person, when you got five people in such a devastating when you visually see the vehicle, how it looks, it's like, it's like, it's just a, a jumbo crunched up mess. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it is a little harder to swallow that these guys managed to find their way back home with no one noticing. You know, one person, sure, five people who don't live alone, they have families. Oh, one of them actually under a uh, uh, house arrest. <laughs> so they know their dad is making sure that he's getting home on time. You know, so it, it's, 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 it's kind of uh, ridiculous. So it's kind of ridiculous. Now, my other major dislike was the lack of a Megazord morphing sequence. Throughout this movie, I did laugh a lot. I smiled a lot. I was having fun with it, but I was not liking certain aspects, confused about certain aspects. But as the climax is coming and we see the Zords, Fighting, you know, say, so, okay, whatever happens, I know this is going to be uh, cool when uh, they morph into the Megazord. Okay, this Megazord doesn't have a battle, the platform, uh, mobile battle form, mobile, that's fine. But, you know, however it comes together, I can't wait for that sequence. And, and, and it's starting to come and started going, like, okay, here it is, the, 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 the Megazord combining sequence. And, and, and they just merge. The, 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 the Zords are tossed into a pit. And at the last moment of desperation, they just merge and they stand up into the Megazord. And it's like, okay, if this were giant mega machines, like if this was one of the brand, that would have been fine. But this is Power Rangers. We want to see the Zords combine into the Megazord. Every season of Power Rangers has that. Voltron has that. If Pacific Rim decides they want to do combo uh, uh, kaiju monster fighter things, they're going to have a combo section. The live, the the the, uh, the two Power Ranger movies mm -hmm. from the original uh, brand series, the the, the that they made, mm -hmm. they had combo, the combo sequence. How can you have 
of powering the movie without the combo scene. It's bad enough we're not getting them saying, you know, uh, the Mastodon, Pterodactyl, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, Triceratops, Save mm -hmm. the Tiger, Transformer. We don't get that. Okay, fine. We don't even really get a real proper introduction of the Zords. They, like, Alpha 5 just comes and says, hey, look, these are going to be your Zords. They were formed by the uh, great uh, creatures of Earth at the time. Even though I'm pretty sure we didn't have Mastodons with eight legs <laughs> and Triceratops with six legs, but okay, fine. But they're not named or anything. They just say, yeah, they're your Zords. Okay. And then later on you see them, and I guess they assume everyone knows what type of Zords they are, but still they're not introduced. They're not saying this is the same two tiger. You get into because you're fierce and loyal and this, this is the Mastodon is strength and power. You know, it doesn't say, like, yeah, they're, they're your Zords. Go ahead. <laughs> Fine. Uh, for some reason, the, the Red Ranger has a, a power sword. The other Rangers don't have weapons. Fine. But all of it would have been saved if we would have had a cool morphing sequence. And what they, the lack of a, of a morphing sequence for the Megazord is just wrong for Power Rangers. Even Michael Bay, <laughs> who I can't stand in his Transformer movie. <laughs> He had the devastated robots all come together and reach, you know, and everything. And I hated that design of devastated, but you still see the the the, uh, the the machines come together to form devastated. They're gonna say, "Hey, look over there!" And look back. Oh, look, it's devastated. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that 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 was just wrong, wrong, wrong. All right. So now that we got the top uh, things we didn't like out of the way, let's talk about some of the things that we did enjoy. And since we were just talking about the Zords, uh, Balatron, you actually liked the design of the Zords. We were disappointed about the lack of Zords coming together, but the actual design of the Zords, uh, you liked, right? Correct. Give props to designers of the team and how they maintain the almost the original designs of, from the original source material from the TV show. And they kind of like upgraded a little bit with the different colors and a little bit metallic and pizzazz too. But I like how they maintain the original design and intent of the swords. Yeah. And I, as a designer, I appreciate that they try to make it look very alien. That's, again, that's, uh, like the Transformers. <laughs> a lot of people don't like the look of the Transformers when they're in robot mode, but still they are aliens, so they want to try to make it look kind of alienish. So I can appreciate this looking a little alienish, but then there are times it just looks like, over <laughs> you know, I think they could have died back in the way, but so I, I don't hate the design. Once I got over the whole idea of uh, the Mastodon having eight legs and you know, <laughs> trying to have six legs for some reason, and they like, you know, after I got over the initial shock of seeing Goldar as his just giant gold, drippy, drooly <laughs> thing that doesn't even fly. It was the point of giving your character wings if it's not going to fly. I mean, sure, Gordon didn't fly in the, in the show that much, but he did fly in the movie, the Black Reef moment. Mm -hmm. And the Megazord, the pterodactyl form was wings for the Megazord. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, what's the point of giving the character wings? It's not going to have wings, but still fine. But yeah, I do, I can appreciate the attempts of making a, a, a cool design. Back on the positive train, let's talk about characters. Your favorite character being? Rita Repulsa. Minori Pulsa will always be my favorite Power Rangers villain of all time. Out of all the series, different series of Power Rangers, Minori Pulsa will always be my favorite. She was in the original, the TV show. I like her pointing, tuned for gray hair pointing. I like how she said, make my monster grow. And she always had a headache. She always had a headache. <laughs> yeah, she, and, she doesn't have a headache in the movie, but, <laughs> but, the, but the line of grow, grow is, 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 is in the movie. And yes, she, yeah, I heard that one point in the movie, and so I, I said, yay. <laughs> I'll have to take a little shout out to that. But I like how this reader, she was more evil, like more involved in the battle. She saw her fierceness side in this movie, so I like and she how could fight. And she could fight. So I like how Rita Repulsa was portrayed in this movie. That's one thing I really enjoyed. My favorite character, to my great surprise, was Alpha 5. Now, watching the uh, promos and the commercials and uh, trailers, it made it look like that this was going to be a, you know, a serious movie. Not like super duper dour series, but still not the silly campy stuff. And then you see Alpha 5 doing these comedic relief things, and I was going to 
I was really afraid this was going to be another Jar Jar Binks situation. You like Jar Jar Binks, though, right? You still like Jar Jar Binks? Yeah. You still like Jar I tolerate Jar Jar Binks. But still, I was not looking forward to Alpha 5 being here. Not because I don't like Alpha 5 as far as the show, just that it would be weird to have this comic relief character in this movie that's supposed to be a serious take on the Power Rangers. Um, but to my great surprise, he was the best character ever. He was funny when it needed to be funny without uh, overly funny. They worked the eye, eye, eye part very well. And Bill Hader, I don't really like Bill Hader's voice except when he does uh, Saturday Night Live. He does this Vincent Price character. I love that. But otherwise, I don't really like his natural voice. But in here, it wasn't annoying either. So they, they did Apple 5 really well. I was greatly surprised. And Apple 5 is, is tough. He's the one that teaches the Rangers how to how to fight uh, and everything, and he's and he's smart, and he's capable. So yeah, I was very pleasantly surprised how well he did Alpha Five. You know, and as far as your character Rita, uh, I I I like Rita very much. Uh, this version of Rita is sinister and evil and definitely uh, willing to kill. Uh, so yeah, they, they they did pretty well with the characters, you know. This uh, on that aspect with the acting and the and the reimagining of the characters, it was pretty solid overall. So yeah, I definitely love Alpha Five. He uh, really loved this version of Rita Repulsa. Now earlier we mentioned the car crash at the Rangers experience. That uh, is actually my other favorite of this movie. There are three spectacular car crashes <laughs> in this. <laughs> movie. Usually when uh, the characters, especially the heroes, are run, racing uh, and their like, vehicle is trying to get away, they don't crash. They know all the other bad guys crash, but they don't crash. No, they crash. It opens up with uh, Jason actually crashing his truck, totaling his truck, or practically totaling his truck. Uh, it ends with uh, Jason's father uh, be talking on the phone, and he winds up in a terrible accident during the uh, Rita Repulsa attack. And of course, there's a scene where the Rangers are uh, trying to get away and their uh, vehicle gets destroyed. And it's like, I don't know if they're trying to teach teens to not uh, text and drive or be responsible drivers, <laughs> but it's like, hey, you think you could be in a high speed chaser situation to get away? No, you are going to mess up your vehicle basically like drive safely. So I don't know if that's a intentional message or they just wanted some spectacular stunt work, but still kids, Adults don't drive fast, don't drive on and hard. That's for the movies in real world, which is this movies try to be like you drive crazy, you're going to crash. <laughs> All right, so those are the things that we greatly liked or greatly disliked. Uh, as far as our general thoughts of the movie, uh, Valentine, what are your basic thoughts of the movie, especially uh, as both a fan of the brand? And as a movie go original. Overall, I felt this movie was a little bit too dark for a Power Rangers. Growing up, watching it in my teenage years, it was always very uppity, uppity, campy, uppity, positive, very bright and vibrant. I felt this Power Rangers, overall, it felt a little bit too dark for me. And then I didn't feel that like joy or campiness compared to the TV series. That kind of like dampened my enjoyment of the movie overall. But overall, for what it was, I ain't, it was fine for what it was. Because like I said, it had my favorite villain, Mirror Repulsa, so that made me tolerate the movie. And on that subject of uh, dark, yeah, all the Power Rangers are screw-ups in some way or another. Usually the Power Rangers, they might have a little angst or a little personal problems, but for the most part, they're good people who just want to do good by world with these kids. They are in detention uh, all the time, or uh, some more than others. Even Billy, because he events scenes that wind up exploding on, cup, on school property, so he gets to sit in detention. Uh, most of them have some type of problem with their parents. So, like the Red Ranger, he screwed up his life, so he has a problem with his dad. Uh, Billy does have a problem with mom, but I, I would love to know the conversation about explaining why their family vehicle was trashed and mm -hmm. crushed out by the uh, gold mines. Uh, Tree, she's gay, and her parents uh, are into labels. 
But of course, at that age, teens must wanna, don't want to be in labor hours similar during that time. So, yeah, this is definitely a teen-targeted movie. Kids will wind up seeing it because of the power of Bam, but really, it's a teen-targeted movie. Teenager, the very first joke of this movie is a masturbation bestiality joke. Okay, one of the sub characters that they're trying to steal a, a, a mascot, cow mascot, into their uh, opponent's uh, locker, and the guy said, "Yeah, well, he should be calm. I milked her. What do you mean you milk? You mean you milked him? You mean him? Meaning he milked a male. <laughs> so that's bestiality and masturbation. First joke in your Power Ranger film." So, yeah, this is not really for kids. Kids are going to want to see it, but I, I, I don't want to be a bad. I want to be a parent explaining why it was bad or problematic <laughs> to milk a boy cow. So, after thinking about it, this movie reminds me of the uh, American Godzilla film, which had a lot of mixed reviews. Mixed reviews. I like that uh, movie as a giant monster movie. As a giant monster movie, it's fantastic. But as a Godzilla movie, it's bad. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it, it goes against what uh, Godzilla was all about. So in this Power Rangers film, as a movie, as a sci-fi, teen angst, action uh, film, it's great. But as a Power Ranger film, it has a lot of the ingredients, but the, 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 the bread's not rising. And without that morphing sequence, it's like, why even bother? And by the way, no one watches Power Rangers to see the Megazord win with a German suplex. Okay? <laughs> I want to see someone win with a German suplex. <laughs> I will go watch the WWE. Okay, Brock Lesnar will give me as many German suplexes as you want. And, all the and, and the movie does call back to something that they learned, but mm. no. I don't want to watch my Power Rangers and see the Megazord win with a German suplex. Okay, that's just I don't know who thought that. I, mean, I don't know who thought that would be a great climax for the Power Ranger movie. Okay, so that's our review of the live-action Power Ranger film. Once again, I give the movie a B minus, and Bellatron, I give it a C plus. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Palatron, do you have any final words for our audience? Yes, I do. I want to thank High Hill Knight for allowing me to volunteer in this video. Wonderful. Thank you again. Please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, find inspiration everywhere. Uh, what's the origin of Balatron, by the way? Balatron originated when I was in college. I developed a superhero and I have a dance background trained in ballet and Tron I thought of the movie Tron something futuristic so I want to combine ballet and the movie Tron so put it together to get Balatron. Oh, okay.